This is a problem similar to your homework problem from section 11-2. Author drilled a hole in a die and filled it with lead weight, then proceeded to roll it 200 times. Here the observed frequencies for the outcomes of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are respectively 27, 31, 42, 40, 28, and 32. Use a 0 0.05 significance level to test the claim that the outcomes are not equally likely. So there's a question, does it appear that the loaded die behave differently than the fair die? All right, so I want to just highlight the idea that we are looking at the claim that the outcomes are not equally likely. So not equally likely is what we have. We don't have a specific distribution so we're going to find our expected values by using the idea that it could be equally likely. Uh, I suppose we should first set up our null and our an alternative hypothesis. So that's the probability of rolling a 1 is going to be the same as probability of rolling a 2, which is the probability of rolling a 3, and so on through the probability of rolling a 6. Your alternative hypothesis We'll say that at least one probability is different. And this ends up being the claim. All right. <clears throat> so now that we have these probabilities that are supposed to be equal to each other, we can find our expected frequencies to be n that's a total number which will be 200 rolled it 200 times divided by k which is the number of categories in this case there's six so the expected frequencies would be 200 divided by 6 which is going to be 33.3 so we will fill this in here I'll just go on and say this is 33.3 it's going to be the same all the way through all right our approach will be a chi-square distribution test where we will uh, use this test statistic. So the chi-square distribution is going to be given by the sum of uh, the observed minus the expected frequencies quantity squared divided by the expected frequencies. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a calculator to find this and then we're going to take a look at this and see how it looks like with a chi-square distribution and we're going to compare it with a critical value. So uh, in order for us to do this, these things are in lists so maybe we can put our observed frequencies in L1 and our expected frequencies in L2 and we'll use the calculator to help us compute this. So let's uh, get our calculators turned on and go to edit stat and edit and then put those numbers in to your list one and list two so I've already done that here on my calculator and I'm gonna go back to the home screen by hitting second and mode and so now I'm back in my home screen and I'm gonna use the sum function sum sum I'm gonna find that by hitting second and stat and then I'm gonna right arrow to math and then the fifth one down is the sum function so I'll just go ahead and hit five now I want to add up these values where again my observed frequency list is in L1 and my expected frequency list is in L2 so I'm gonna open up another parentheses for the numerator so I got double parentheses here uh, I'm going to hit L1 for my observed frequencies minus and then I'll hit L2 for my um, expected frequencies. I'll close the parentheses and I'll hit the square button to take care of my numerator. And then I have a divide and then my expected frequencies again which is my L2. I'll close the parentheses and I'll press enter. So my test statistic is going to be, uh, I'll say TS is going to be uh, chi-squared is equal to 5.866. So that's not too far. Now I want to find my critical value. 
So my critical value would come from table A4 and we're going to need our degrees of freedom for that and the degrees of freedom is going to be k minus 1, the number of categories minus 1. So I'm going to look for 5. We want a 0.05 significance level and so we're going to try to figure out what this number is that splits up 5%. Let's find our table A4. So here's my table, table A4, and I am looking for a 5% area on the right side and then my degrees of freedom again is 5 so I'm looking at the k minus 1 is 5 and if I follow that I will get 11.071 now I want to see where my test statistic fits and it looks like my test statistic will not be in the critical region so we're done with this table let's uh, move it out of the way and say that uh, our test statistic is not in the critical region we fail to reject the null hypothesis so we fail to reject the null hypothesis and uh, we're going to take a look at our claim our claim is the alternative hypothesis so we can go ahead and make our conclusion and our conclusion will say that we were not able to support our claim and our claim is something that we can just find word for word uh, claim that the outcomes are not equally likely so that's what will continue to stay here so we're not able to support our claim that the outcomes are not equally likely okay let's try to answer the question they have here does it appear that the loaded die behaved differently so we were not able to support our claim uh, which is the alternative hypothesis which means it looks like it was fairly equally likely. So uh, it appears that the loaded die behave pretty much like a fair die. And so we can go ahead and say that in words. All right. So I hope that helps. Okay. Now let's uh, let's take a look at another approach. If your calculator and some calculators, some of the newer calculators have the goodness of fit test. If you have a goodness of fit test in your calculator, this will allow us to find our p-values. So let's go to test and let's go up to the chi-square GOF test, that's the goodness of fit. And then it's going to ask where are our observed and expected frequencies, so it's going to be in L1 and L2. And then it's asking for the degrees of freedom, so let's put in the degrees of freedom of 5. And then let's calculate this and see what we get. So if you notice the, the chi-square distribution, that's 5.866, which is what we got. And then uh, furthermore, our p-value, uh, which is a nice number for us to deal with, is 0.319. So if we take a look at that, put that here somewhere for our notes. This is using the GOF test in your calculator. We come with the same conclusions, but... Uh, without using table A4, we can just find the p-value. So the p-value is uh, greater than alpha. So our p-value is 0.319, and that's bigger than 0.05. And then so we're going to come up to the same conclusion, which is to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then we will come up with our same wording, which is to say that we don't support the claim and then we come up with the same conclusion uh, to answer that question. All right. So the GOF test would be would fill in this idea of trying to trying to find your 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 critical region, your critical value from table A4, etc. All right. Okay.